Piers Brosnan may be being hailed the best Bond since Sean Connery, but unlike his screen character, his love of beautiful women is limited to one. Long-term girlfriend Keely Shea Smith was by his side at the premiere. Bond here. Uh, going to Scrambler Channel 4. Oh, it's so difficult to see yourself. I mean, I... I... I was pleased with it, yes. I thought it moved really well. I thought it was action-packed. I thought everybody else was great. And, you know, you kind of look at yourself with half an eye, really. Difficult to look at yourself. But ultimately, I was extremely pleased. What's it like living with a, with a Bond? Well, he's just as adventurous and suave and charming in real life, so it doesn't get any better than that. Familiar Bond faces are back. 82-year-old Desmond Llewellyn returns as Q, and Dame Judi Dench plays M. Last time in Goldeneye, you called Bond a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. <laughs> what did you make of it this time round? Um, I don't have quite so much. I think I've got more respect for him now, probably. Okay, he's, I, no, I've met my match a bit more in this, this one. <laughs> The recipe remains basically the same. Beautiful women, fast cars and gadgets. They're just bigger and bolder. Well, last night was all the hype. What about uh, The Proof of the Pudding? Was it a good movie? Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, if you like the Bond-type movies, then you can't go wrong with this. As Piers Brosnan says, it's bigger, it's better, it's bolder. The action sequences are superb. Loads of gadgets. Some of the old faces are back. Dame Judi Dench as M and Desmond Llewellyn as Q. But also some new faces. One girl that attracted a lot of attention was the uh, the girl that you had on the sofa sorry, sorry, earlier it? this no, week. No, 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 oh. There's gadgets everywhere. Can you hear that? What do you hear? Do -do. There you are. There's the, um, there's a, a telephone that goes on the, not my cue. How do you turn these off? Right. Sorry. Gadgets everywhere here. Right. You are What's that seven, you've got you? there? You've got another oh, telephone. Oh, I don't know. It's completely disrupting what I'm supposed yeah. to be telling you. Yeah, but anyway, sure. I'm going to tell you about a new face yeah. in the Bond. Michelle Yeo, who yes. uh, wants a piece of the action in the Bond film. Yes. She's, she's a martial Bond arts expert, isn't the she? 90s. She certainly is. Take a mm. look at this. Mm. And here is that very bike which we have in the studio today. A mean machine this is, You're not isn't going it? To attempt to get on it, are you? Oh, I don't know. Cool. It is. It's phenomenal, isn't it? How much yeah, does that cost? This twelve thousand pounds. And I mean, this film is absolutely amazing for product placement. The makers of this bike made the car last time round in Goldeneye, which there's now a two-year waiting list for. Mm. But makers just can't wait to try and get their products in films like this. The people who made this watch, we won't say who. Um, are so into product placement, they've actually got one of these on the moon, um, courtesy of NASA. Yeah, it's all very big business. Well, the thing, the thing about all that is, I mean, does, does that mean, is it a movie for plot or products then? I mean, do you get a bit hacked for me, off? Yeah, I found it quite irritating. I mean, when this, for example, this little gadget here, this little phone, every time they mention this, they seem to mention the make, and I, I thought it was quite annoying. Yeah. The stars didn't seem to mind all the product placement, and when we caught up with them at the party, that's one thing I asked them about, so let's have a listen to what they had to say. The BMW isn't as pretty as the Aston Martin, but the gadgets are as good. I mean, Q is 965 now, and Bond is still whatever he is. I think the whole James Bond whole thing is commercialised. Yeah, I don't I think it's always been. I just, um, I love gadgets, so I think they're great. It's very commercial, but I mean, you know, how many, I mean, it's a Bond film, what else do you expect? Well, I'm sure uh, Mr. BMW and Mr. Dunhill paid a lot of money in order to have their products plastered all over the screens. So, you know, it's advertising of a sort, but it doesn't really bother me hugely. Okay, some of the people who turned out in force to uh, see the That's premiere right. uh, last night. And uh, they don't come any older than Desmond Llewellyn, they who don't. plays Q. Bless him. Do you know, he's about 82 now. Yeah. And confessed to me last night that he can't even change a plug. I took these gadgets along because I thought, well, you know, who better to talk yeah. us through them? But take a look at what he had to say. I don't know anything about gadgets. They always go wrong as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Your new BMW 750. Can you tell us anything about that or not? <laughs> well, no, no. Um, I can't. Uh, this is the Ericsson uh, concept um, phone. 
It doesn't work. I know, it was working earlier, but then we showed Piers Brosnan it and it broke. Well, what did you expect? <laughs> so I mean, did... keep, keep all these gadgets well away from even Piers. Bless him, what a, what a gent, what a gent. I've interviewed mm -hmm. him before, he's a really, really nice he's man. lovely, and they've started work on the next already. Have they? Because I heard uh -huh. rumours that uh, Pierce Brosnan was giving up. No, 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 he's contracted to make a third, he's got an option on a fourth, mm -hmm. but to avoid, there are a lot of problems with this Bond film, getting it off the ground, and mm -hmm. to avoid those problems, they've already started work on the next. They haven't got a title yet, yeah. but the, there's already been some script meetings with Brosnan, and he is happy to Good. fulfil his contractual Obligations. duties. Yes. And, uh, and there are there are usually about two years between the films. Mm, that right. phone hasn't rung again, That's good because it's over there oh, anyway, really? so don't worry about it. Now, all this week we have been running a James Bond competition. If you have been watching the programme, you've had the chance to win a week's holiday for two people in Thailand, where much of Tomorrow Never Dies was filmed. The question we asked you was, how does James Bond like his favourite cocktail? A, on the rocks, B, shaking not stirred, or C, with ice and a slice? And, of course, the answer was B, shaken, not stirred. Right, we've got seven lucky finalists. There they are on your screen this morning. Good morning to Yvonne Payne from Hereford, from Crewe, Pauline Bateman from Mid Glamorgan, Karen Northam, Maureen Burgess from Glasgow, Vanessa Jarrett from Sly, Anne Marie Hansen, who should be on the line from Cleveland, and from Hertfordshire, Susan Cotsworth. When the music stops, the winner is the person whose name is featured on the screen. <laughs> Vanessa Jarrett from Sly. You know the rest. Hey, Vanessa, you there? Hi there. Hello, Vanessa. You're off to Thailand. <laughs> Thank you very much. Not at all. Have you anybody to go with you? I have, yeah, my boyfriend, Matt. Oh, pity. Right. Are you going to go and see this new Bond film? I do. Are you going to go and see this new Bond film? I definitely will now, yeah. Excellent. We've thrown in some spending money for you as well. Oh, fantastic. It's an absolutely tremendous prize, and thank you very much indeed for entering. Thank you. Anybody you'd like to say hello to? Um, yeah, my mum and dad down in Devon. Good, good. Well, thank you, Vanessa, and well done. Uh, to you and we should tell you watching at home there is more about the latest Bond adventure in the current GMTV magazine which of course is on sale now at a news agents near you. Mm, it is. They were making fun of our competitions, weren't they, Eamon Holmes? Yes, oh, he's not to, he's kissing Helen Morton. What? I wasn't. They were <laughs> he was. Her. <laughs> I caught you red handed. Uh, what I was saying yes. was, you pay attention now. Yes. They were ta making, taking the mickey out of our competitions on that light lunch yesterday, Ooh, oh, weren't they're they? They're the cheek, haven't they? Yeah, hey. they're cheek. Vanessa knows we're where she's. We're the biggest stars been. they've ever had, Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, stay tuned with us this morning. And a man comes in, he's about 5'8", he's clean shaven, he walks the length of the counter, it's all perfectly innocent. Now, we'd like to show you what comes afterwards, but it is too gruesome to show. In actual fact, Mrs Kylie is brutally attacked by this man, he leans across the counter, with it, coshes her with his left hand, she sustains a wound over her right eye, he runs behind the counter, then he rifles through her desk and steals around £3,000 worth of jewellery and watches. It was a brutal attack. What, how did you feel when you realised what had really happened? I was absolutely horrified. Uh, first of all, I couldn't really believe my eyes. And uh, then I was just uh, in a state of shock and grief at what had happened. Sure. Well, we can see a little more of the film. Let's take a look at this. This is the man leaving the shop. He's hurrying out now, of course. He's carrying the, the stolen goods. And Mrs Kylie's on the left-hand side. She's just regaining consciousness. She's stirring. She's moaning a little bit. This is a man that police obviously need to find as soon as possible. Back to you, Eamon. Lucy, thank you very much indeed. And uh, we wish Mrs Kiley, Joan Kiley, their continued recovery from that uh, horrible, horrible, brutal attack. Uh, we now go back to Plymouth. Detective Inspector Chris Carter is there in our Plymouth studio. Uh, good morning to you, Detective Inspector. Good morning, Eamon. Uh, I'm sure you'll agree, uh, an incredibly vicious attack, but it's uh, somewhat disturbing, isn't it, that in covering this crime was left to a complete amateur in the form of uh, Mrs Kiley's son? Yeah, it's a very unusual circumstances. Obviously, for uh, Mrs Kiley's point of view, she um, uh, is taken to hospital and uh, uh, obviously thought she just had a fall. If it wasn't for her son viewing the security video, the police would uh, have never been informed of the situation. So really, you had no idea at all that a violent attack had taken place on Mrs Kylie. That's correct. Until we uh, we saw the tape ourselves, and um, I can uh, I can say that police officers who've seen the tape are uh, equally uh, shocked and um, uh, astounded by the amount of force that was used by the offender. 
So what do you know about the offender, the man that you're looking for? Well, obviously, you can see the description yourself on the video, uh, albeit that it's um, uh, in black and white and it's not 100% uh, clear. Um, I think anyone who sees that, who knows this character, uh, will be able to put a name to him and uh, hopefully anyone who does know him will come forward and contact us. Yeah, do you know, the, the interesting thing, um, Detective Inspector Carter, he seemed so calm, so calculated from what... I could see of the video footage there, just when he walked around that shop and walked out. I mean, one would suspect that he was no stranger to this sort of crime. That, that's quite possible. He certainly was, um, he planned, um, we, we'd have thought he'd planned what he was doing very carefully. And uh, his actions, as I say, you don't see the actual assault, but his actions um, would appear uh, to be um, well planned. And uh, he obviously knew what he was going to do and um, carried it out with ruthless efficiency. Now, you don't know if he is a local man or not, but obviously um, the chances are that he, he could well be. So it's people in the, in the, the Plymouth area that oh. uh, were particularly appealing to you, yeah? Yes, obviously. Uh, having said that, the uh, incident took place within uh, 150 yards of the bus station in Plymouth. It <laughs> is quite possible that the uh, offender has come from outside the area. So again, um, the appeal is anyone who knows that man, uh, please get hold of us uh, in our Plymouth incident room. OK, well, what we're going to do, uh, Inspector Carter, is put up a picture of him now. We've got your incident room phone number there. Uh, D.I. Chris Carter, thank you very much indeed. This is the man D.I. Chris Carter and his team are looking for. If you think you can help, call the police 01-752-720-559. Uh, just, just one thing, uh, Inspector Carter, before we leave you. Um, what, what time of the year did this happen? When did this happen? Yes, it happened two weeks ago today. It's in fact the, uh, if you like, second week anniversary of it. It happened at, at about 12 minutes past uh, midday uh, on Wednesday the 26th of November. Obviously it wasn't reported to us until the film was viewed, which was in the early hours of uh, Monday the 1st of December. But it was Wednesday the 26th of November at about 10 past 12. OK, and if you think you can help, 01752. 720 double five nine. All right. Up next.